I am. I'm like the council estate dream, of course. Go out to Luton, turn the Christmas lights on. That's a joke, they haven't asked me. It's no secret that my career is um, quite unconventional, uh, to say the least. So initially I was working as a shop assistant at Luton Airport as all the highbrow journalists will point out before they give me a write-up. And this show, you know, the premise was that they'd take six young consumers from the UK to India, blood, sweat and t-shirts, to show us how our high street garments were made. It, it was a life-changing experience. I'm very, very fortunate. But they thought, hang on, you know, she's asking questions that might sound quite stupid. <laughs> but, you know, if she's asking, perhaps other people are thinking. The next two documentaries I'm very proud of. I think they're very strong, I think they're very thought-provoking, they're important. And that's what Three is doing so well at the minute. I mean, one's in the Philippines and it's looking at paedophilia, essentially. So we had access to Homeland Security. It was brilliant because we were able to tell the story very, very clearly. Oh my gosh. You know, it's always very, very hard. It's very, very emotional when it's kids because they are the most vulnerable, aren't they? You know, they're our babies, and they're the people that, that you want to look after first and foremost. I think I learned a lot in terms of how I approach these criminals, because, you know, the reality is I'm face to face with this paedophile who has sexually abused all of these vulnerable kids, and everything within you wants to shout and bawl and tell him he's this monster, but then the other half, you're not going to get any information out of him by doing that. I just remember looking at him in the eye and just saying, what have you done? Who tends to contact you? Foreigners. Foreigners? Yes. So this 41-year-old... Yes. ...wants to meet with you, even though he knows that you're 14? Yes. Doris is looking at the sort of levels of brutality. It's, it's the murder capital of the world. It's a place called San Pedro Sula. And the reality is, if you're a female, you're up against it from the very, very start. Okay. What's your name? Stacy. Stacy. See? Beautiful name. Thank you. Thank you. And tell me why you're inside. For rape. Yeah. I mean, the statistics in terms of Honduras, they're quite conservative estimations because you can never really say. I've had conversations with numerous mums who have looked at me and said, you know, our, our daughter went missing, but we were too frightened to go to the authoritative figures because if we do say, you know, she's missing, then we don't want to deal with the repercussions that are inevitable. They're saying every 13 hours, more or less, a, a woman is going AWOL or is, or is being murdered, but I would guess it's probably more than that. There's one girl in particular at the moment um, that I often think about and it's um, a girl called Heidi, she's in Honduras and she has had an incredibly tough time. So she's with this fella, domestic violence was a huge part of her life and you know, it got to the stage where she said that's it, you know, I've had enough, I'm leaving and he said you're not going anywhere and he picks up the machete and hacks both of her legs off. This girl is the same age as me and she sat opposite me explaining very clearly you know what her life is now like having to be sat in this sort of DIY wheelchair and it's a miracle she's still alive. It's sometimes hard to comprehend that their reality will always be that way unfortunately but I think you have to try and show the story for what it is, let people make up their own minds do you know, I often think, if I hadn't have done blood sweat, where would I be, you know? What would I be doing? The teachers will tell you that I'd probably be <laughs> sat at home with three children, pulling the air out. Um, but they're wrong. <laughs>